episodes and welcome to the Lair of the Film Exorcist. Now like last time, before we start, go ahead and tell me down in the comments section below if you could choose any class, what would it be? Personally, I'd say mine would be a knight for the awesome sword and shield combo and the shiny armor that can basically protect you from almost anything. Because tonight, we will be taking a look at Cautious Hero, aka the hero is overpowered but overly cautious. Now the story follows a divine goddess and her hero who like the title explains is way too cautious despite his really strong stats and huge power level. Now onto my opinion. Now I can sadly say that I didn't hear about the show until a few days ago which is pretty sad for someone who constantly checks for new anime every week. So the show was created by Masayuki Sayoko who has also directed Sword Art Online, Alternate Game Gale Online, it was, and it was created by White Fox Studios, who is known for anime like ReZero and Akame Got Killed, which explains the clear comedy vibe given off during the series. So let's see, is this just another great Izakai, or is it just some bad comedy like Konosuba? I did enjoy the many art styles used during the show, especially the interesting use of the art style of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure on Rista later on in the show when we tr she tries to prove that she's the best at healing. And I also love how one of the Dragonborn children looks just like the main character of Beyblade Metal Fusion, which is pretty funny, but the rest of the characters really don't change at all, which doesn't really bother me. I just wish there was a bit more creativity in the show, but I guess I shouldn't expect much since this is supposed to be your typical Izakai anime. I also love the little trick they did during the intro where they would add in the four generals after we'd meet them, which kept the intro constant, which is very rare, especially for a show like this, which would usually just keep the intro the same throughout the running. I'm also a huge fan of the rock music that plays for the intro and during some of the battles that take place during the show, and the rest of the music was truly on point, especially during the saddest part near the end of the show. It just gives you those feels, people. Now for the characters, which I guess as could I could say there is a huge change from most Isekai, starting with the main character, who unlike most is way too cautious compared to the usual calm or overconfident hero, but this is understandable because we learn later on in the story that this cautiousness is due to a huge, huge dark backstory that our hero has faced, which is a part of the reason why he tries to kill the monsters even when they're dead. But then again, his attitude does get a bit old and it does slow down the story way too much. Next is the goddess Rista, who I'm going to keep calling Rista because I cannot say her full name. That is way too long, like Lukua, who in a way really reminds me of Aqua in the sense that she complains a lot and she can get annoying, but she is also really good at her job. And again, like our hero, she has been through a lot, but that doesn't excuse her for wanting to speed up the show way too much. And she feels like the literal personification of the idea that our hero has got to be god mode every moment of the show. Because he's got godlike powers. I mean, come on. Really? That's what makes these shows get so old so quickly. And that's why I don't ever want to watch One Punch Man. Because I feel he's overpowered. Now, the other two party members do interest me. But that's mostly because we don't get much on them other than their dragonborns, and one of them almost became a divine blade, and the other becomes Saya's apprentice, but that's about it, before the show completely leaves that world, and I don't think we'll see them again during the second season. Now the rest of the gods and goddesses in the show seem more, ex more like extras in the sense that we don't see most of them until one of the main characters needs them for training or just to talk to. Now, be it we're supposed to focus on the main characters, 
but I really wish we got more screen time with the supporting cast. Maybe like one of those end credit scenes that some shows like Naruto would do just to give us more information on these, on the entire world outside of this small window that we get during the show. Give us a bit of lore. I mean, really? This is how you do a show? And finally, the story, which might just be my least favorite part of the entire show. To start, I'd just like to make it clear that this isn't my first isekai, as you guys have seen when I did Konosuba. So when watching this one, I expected more than just a new character with a different personality than most isekai characters. I was hoping for something new, similar to that of that time I got reincarnated as a slime, where the character didn't just want to go after some demon lord. I would have been much happier if the character and his goddess just decided to protect the town, or create a huge army just to face the demon lord and his generals. But no. They went with the usual four person party, faces everyone on their own, on top of that, we continue to use the same trope of our hero starting out overpowered and being able to beat anyone at the beginning, including slimes and boars and all this. I mean, even Sword Art Online started us off with one of the main characters getting the crap beat out of him by a boar. Do something like that. I mean, we don't even see him badly injured until the end when he faces that king during turn demon and the demon lord but I guess I shouldn't expect much from a 12 episode series I guess what I'm saying is I want something similar to rise of the shield hero or Aru Furetta from commonplace to world's strongest both had the main character start out weak or basically having the crap beat out of him where this one like the rest gives our main character the usual overpowered stats has gotten way old for this genre. I will again admit that I felt sorry for our main character after learning about his backstory and there were some funny moments in the show like the events that take place with the goddess of archery and her nymphomaniac personality but this doesn't save it from the bland story that we received which makes me fear for what the second season does when it does come out. I have also always wondered why every time we see a goddess in one of these shows, they have to wear a skimpy dress. Which, yeah, I get it, we need something for the guys to stare at, but I mean, they could have also had them dress normally and get the same effect. But it's whatever. You can just have another, is it cool to have dated girls in a dungeon or however, or Don Machi, I mean, to say. Come on, guys. Think bigger. Think like Jessica Rabbit or any of the schoolgirls in any of the slice of life. They don't have to look like complete, complete, um, pervert bait. Use your head. We want the story, not just sex appeal. So, sadly, it seems like the show didn't meet my expectations and just seemed like your generic isekai anime. So sadly, I'm going to have to give it a 4 out of 10 for the bland story and how annoying some of the gags were. But the art, music, ending, and backstory did save this show from being the worst isekai in the world. So I honestly wouldn't recommend this to anyone unless you're willing to suffer through the same old story just to get a different ending. With that, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you guys next week. And... Just have a good night.